The last time I sat behind the wheel of a Hyundai, it was the Nexo, a fuel cell SUV that took me 900 miles on the power of hydrogen. Hyundai's Kona Electric is similar, from the number of seats to the preponderance of buttons in the cockpit. But where the Nexo confines you to a handful of hydrogen stations across California, the Kona Electric has a battery big enough to go from Los Angeles to Las Vegas on one charge. Or it would, if there weren't so many mountains in between. If the Kona Electric looks familiar to you, you've probably laid eyes on its gas-powered cousin, the Hyundai Kona, sans electric. There's no radiator here, so no need of a radiator grill. In its place is a textured plate, which hides the hatch covering the charging port. It kind of gives the car the look of a wind tunnel test article, but it does help give the electric version a better drag coefficient than the gas model. Starting my adventure in Los Angeles gives me the opportunity to take the Kona through the twists of Mulholland Drive around sunset, the dusk light flitting across the Battleship Grey paint job. Hyundai doesn't call this Battleship Grey, but I do. As with most battery electrics, driving the Kona is equal parts fun and reassuring. The torque of an electric motor means instant acceleration when you hit the go pedal, and the low center of gravity helps it stick to the road when you do so. That said, there's actually too much power for the front tires to maintain traction when you mash the gas from an all-stop, and I find myself getting frequent head turns when I squeal into a merge more aggressively than I intend. Like the folks at JD Power, I too wish there were an all-wheel drive option to help with this. Now, slowing down will also be familiar to electric drivers, with four levels of adjustable regenerative braking. I keep the regen at maximum for most of my trip, so every time I ease off on the go pedal, the car instantly slows as the electric motor becomes a generator, recapturing that momentum and dumping it back into the battery as energy. One pedal driving takes some getting used to, but it becomes a fun game watching the power meter register the temporary top up every time I slow down. How much it actually adds to the range, well, we'll come back to that. A stop at Vazquez Rocks gives me the opportunity to get a little more desert dust on that gloss coat, and also to take in the rest of the Kona's design. On the outside, this does not give the impression of a small car, and Hyundai is quick to point out that it actually gives you 13% more cargo capacity than Chevy's Bolt EV. But I still feel like I'm pushing it with only a couple backpacks in the trunk here, without folding down the back seats, that is. And having just come off the Hyundai Nexo, this cabin definitely does not feel as spacious. Later in the trip, my tall colleagues Alex and Andrew from Android Central will make plain that stacking tall dude in front of tall dude is not something you want to do in the Kona Electric. Now's a good time to mention that my review car is the ultimate trim, which includes features like power tilt and slide sunroof, a Qi wireless charger for your phone, and those ventilated seats I came to appreciate on my Nexo road trip. The 8-inch touchscreen head unit is sharp and responsive, and while Hyundai's software is just as clumsy as any other car makers, I'm happy I can use Android Auto instead. Back on the road, en route from Vazquez to Vegas, I realize I've made an amateur hour error. Sure, the distance between LA and Las Vegas is technically 270 miles, only about 12 miles more than the Kona Electric's rated EPA range, but there's also an elevation change of over 2,000 feet across the route I've chosen, and electric cars, like any other car, use a lot more energy to climb. I have 122 miles to go before I hit the rapid charger in Baker, California, and an estimated range of 137 miles remaining before a dead battery. There's a great thread on Quora about how EVs perform in the mountains with some great data points on electric versus gas. I'll link to it in the description. And I will say that I prefer to be in an EV on the downhill side of the course, since I can recapture some energy through regen instead of using friction brakes as a gas vehicle has to. But there's no getting around it. That long uphill slog means I have to stop for a charge up earlier than I want to at an EVgo charger in Victorville, California. It takes 45 minutes to fill up from 45% to 81% using the DC fast charging, and while that's another reminder that electrics aren't quite as convenient as their fossil-fired counterparts, conversations with fellow fuelers give me some perspective. The Hyundai Ioniq next to me has a maximum range of just 124 miles between charges, while the Nissan Leaf across the way tops out at 151. 
On paper, my Kona Electric has them both beat by over 100 miles. It also beats out the Bolt EV I drove a while back, and it goes without saying that that figure makes it a potent competitor to the mid-tier Tesla Model 3. But while I probably could have made it the 187 remaining miles from Victorville to Vegas on my 81% charge, it would have been a close shave. And my confidence was consistently undermined by the estimated range remaining, aka the gasometer. I elect instead to sprint to another charging station in Baker, California. It's great to meet my friend Nicole Scott at the world's largest thermometer, and the nearby alien jerky shop is full of distractions to whittle away another half hour. But mainly, I'm just happy to be here because while the map confirms I've driven 100 miles from Victorville exactly, the gasometer showed that I'd consumed 147 miles of estimated range. That's even in Eco Plus mode, which tries to maximize range at the expense of performance and creature comforts. Look, range anxiety is common in electric cars, but it's especially off-putting when multiplied by this combination of efficiency-robbing elevation and inaccurate computer guessing. The last 90 miles uphill to Vegas are uneventful. I arrive in the sparkling city of glitz and gambling, comfortable, having finally gotten used to the push-button drive shift, and I've been enfolded in the bassy thrum of the excellent sound system the whole way, the heated steering wheel taking the edge off the desert cold. I've turned off the Eco Plus mode, so maybe it's these accessories that have further thrown off my electric efficiency. Maybe I'm just tired and hungover on alien jerky. But I come away without a solid sense of the Kona EV's actual range. I know it's very long, and as I said before, it's the biggest Model 3 competition there is, especially at a starting price of below $37,000. That's a price Tesla still hasn't managed to hit. All this probably helped Hyundai secure the North American Utility Vehicle of the Year award for the Kona, which it shares with the Jaguar I-Pace and the Acura RDX. And the potential range alone puts it near the top of my list for EVs to consider, as does its comfort as long as you're not too tall. So if Hyundai decides to market the Kona outside of California, I'd love to take the electric for a drive on the flatter roads of my native New England, because I'd like to see just how far it can actually take those of us who don't need to tackle the mountains in their daily commute. If that's something you'd like to see, please sound off in the comments. Just a standard disclosure on the way out, folks, Hyundai loaned the car for a one-week review period and also picked up the cost of electric top-ups. I got no other compensation and granted no early copy approval. You're seeing this video at the same time they do. Again, let me know if that range test in the same car would be interesting to you, or drop your own anecdotes from your own EV drives. Please subscribe to The Mr. Mobile on YouTube so you don't miss the next mobile tech review coming very soon. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.